Hello and welcome to So Farscape. A fun-filled Farscape fancast by a fervent fan. And a frankly fascinated first-timer. I'm Kaki. I'm Kay. And, and this, this is, is the story, story So Farscape. Farscape. We're back. We're back. Yes. Long intermezzo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've, we've had our, what do we call it again? Greatest hiatus. Yes. Yes, that's right. A greatest hiatus, two fanfics, and now we're we're back. So we've had the same sort of experience that the fans had back in the day during the months-long wait. Yes, we have to get back to the thing. And the, today's episode is 319 I Yench You Yench. And... First of all, I want to say that after watching it, I still have no idea what Yenching is. I mean, I assume it's a reference to ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream, but I Yench, you Yench, we all Yench for? Who knows? <laughs> well, for for I Yench. I mean, I Yench bracelets is, is what it refers to. Oh, is that what they're called? Oh, you didn't get... Okay, so this must have been extra baffling then. Oh, okay, right. So, yeah, I had no idea. I mean, I heard them mumble something, but I didn't hear that they were... Okay, so it's the bracelets. No, fair enough. I get it now. Yes. So, as our listeners say, this episode, and they, they came out in droves, which I, I've, I've been really looking forward to these. Let me see. Rick from the Delta Quadrant is back. Our resident sort of poet or uh, uh, snappy... I mean, he's. I think Rick has delivered limericks before. Yes. That's right. So... Two blue, angry, rawfish hounds in our diner. Burn it down. It's the ties that bind. Are these the good kind? Keep hitting your head on the ground. (laughs) Thank you, Rick. Whereas Billy Roberts says, Dargo and Rigel meet Scorpius and Bracca with a deal that would be mutually beneficial. Only problem is, they pick the worst diner in the uncharted territories to go have said meeting. (laughs) Will they come out to an understanding? Will Rigel get food poisoning? It all just begs one question. Why Why so so difficult? difficult? Thank you, Billy Roberts. Someone gets trigger happy, insurance fraud is committed, and a terrible robbery slash hostage situation is performed by two blue monkeys and why so difficult? <laughs> Thank you, Going Metal 799. And a small business owner's gets rich quick scheme is foiled when old enemies with fancy jewelry use his restaurants for top secret talks by someone. No, so it oh. continues. It continues. Meanwhile, on Moya. Oh, oh shit. Uh, yeah. I, I, I thought, uh, yeah, all right. Meanwhile, on Moya, visions of sorrow come true due to an itchy trigger finger. Why, Why so, so difficult? difficult? Oh, thanks, Marky Steele. Yes. Well oh, God, this is like, it goes on for quite a while still. I thought that was it. Wow. We are going to maybe have to become a little bit more selective in future, but thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. An Elmore Leonard story interrupts our crew's attempts to negotiate for their safety. Meanwhile, it's time for serious discussion about long-term Leviathan care. Ooh, thanks, Nazi. Friendship bracelets, Farscape style. Why, Why so, so difficult? difficult? <laughs> With some guest characters that look suspicious like some of the creative team. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> Monkey business ensues when Pumpkin and Honey Bunny interrupt negotiations at the restaurant. One of our heroes learns to empathise to an extraordinary level, and another is convinced to get a lobotomy. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Thanks, Dark. Adam T. Yes. Bring it. Uh, Okay, honeys, what would you like to order? Let's start with the little man in the booster chair. What would you like to eat? Oh, don't get uppity with me, or you're not going to get anything. I don't care how many people you've ruled over. I'm the importance of this diner. Okay, next, you big strapping tentacles hunk. I bet you got a good meaty meal. Now, dark and leather something cool to drink? A wormhole snack on its, this side of the sector? I'll be right with everyone's meals. Oh, you, I'll bring you whatever you want. Be right back with your drinks. <laughs> thanks, Black Thank Rain. <laughs> and, and thanks to you, Kay. Like... At what point did you realise this was a diner? And at what point did you imagine a diner where the fucking Hermione Granger's mum is the proprietress? Oh, is that the actual... I have no idea. I was trying to actually actress? pull somebody somebody oh, okay. else. What was it? Hyacinth Bouquet. That's who uh, I wanted. Oh, right. Which, you know, <laughs> you can imagine a that familial she was, sort of... Yeah, I can imagine that she was like uh, Hermione Granger's <laughs> mum. Yeah, totally. Oh, well, I mean, what time did I realise it was a diner? That was like, well... I mean, that's opening shot establishes that. I know, because... Oh, yes, 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 yes. Here we go. Yeah. So this was a, a very interesting episode to return with. We were left before the hiatus with the pronouncement and the stern determination that John, Aaron and Chris were going to go to Scorpius' the command, command, command carrier yes. and stop his wormhole experiments. Mm. And so we've been looking forward to that during the entire hiatus, and we've come back to this. A heist with screaming and just a stupid, stupid robbery. Yes. It's like almost like the producers were like trying to 
delay the onset of the actual going to go to the command carrier. Although I can see that the the, the, the thing that was happening in the diner was a setup for for how that's going to develop, and of yes. course the whole talent subplot introduction. Well, introduction, I mean, this is the culmination yeah. of what we've been seeing going on for a while. He's displayed unstable behavior before, but never quite so severe. Because what what happens in an extraordinary bit of continuity, the, the one-hit wonder alien from uh, Survivor from the last episode, Nudge Gill. Yes, the, uh, uh, the Scarron. Glowy-eyed Scarron, yeah. Yes, who's still bloody. Yes, still quite wounded, is about to embark on a med ship, medical frigate, that apparently Moya has met. Yes, two ships passing in the night. He's talking to uh, Jewel. They're doing a walk and talk down. Uh... Holding hands? Yes, I noticed that they've been getting... I mean, they, they were kind of friendly at the end of last episode, but this is mm. getting even much more so. I wonder how they spent the night. Sure. Aaron has been uh, investigating the medical ship and proclaims that everything is fine. Yeah, on a transport pod yeah and i just remembered i'm a very bad fan i don't remember when she lost the use of her prowler didn't that get shot down uh, that on... is obviously when it happened yes see, end of season two yeah yeah what am i even saying <laughs> i just it doesn't feel right erin without a prowler no, no yeah and she says yes it's fine it's uh, it's about 500 600 people on board and apparently this is just a hospital ship floating around and healing yes. people well well they have they they're having a capacity problems i believe uh, oh, is that it? there's something mentioned like that but it's the rest it's furthermore ignored after that we don't hear back from that Nash Gill is even encouraging Jewel to, uh, come, to come with, with it yeah and she's entertaining that thought cuz she doesn't have any quarrel with the peacekeeper i mean they don't even know about her that's a discussion that she has with Erin later, I think, or with Chana. Chana, yeah. yeah. And she just doesn't want to die, which is not a weird thing yeah. at all. And Chana is uh, having a, a talk with John, and he's also going like, oh, yeah, why? Well, uh, well, I'm uh, leaving. Yeah, you know, next planet we uh, get to, uh, I'm gone. Yeah, because she's extremely pessimistic about their, their prospects. Yeah, she doesn't want to go to a command carrier. She's like, no, screw that. That's a suicidal plan, not doing that. Bye. Yep. And she's even decided that uh, uh, while Dargo and uh, Rigel are off to negotiate with Scorpius, like, he doesn't make deals, so they're definitely already dead or being fried right. in the Aurora yeah. chair. She doesn't believe the fact that this is going to work. I mean, I think that this is just how she's expressing her worry mm. still over, uh, yeah. maybe not so much Rige. Well, a little bit. They got on pretty well. Now we get the uh, opening shot of the diner, and come on, the, the way you see that thing, that yes. it, it has to be a diner, it can't be anything but a diner. It's a weird building that the growler is parked in front of, but yeah. it's it's got the traditional window and sort of bar stools and booths and, and tables. And the signs and, and everything. Oh, this... Rigel I, is happy because he's getting his uh, morels or whatever they're called again. Margels! Margels lovely yeah. Hynerian Margels! Got a whole plate full of them. Yeah, he's talking about the quality, how they're fantastic. They're our specialty. People come from planets you've never heard of just to eat our Margels. I like How's, that brag. How is that good? Like, it's like, <laughs> yes, people from a place that you've never heard of come over here to uh, eat this food. That's how far away they come from. Right, to, she doesn't know where he's from, or, but anyway. Well, yeah, also, this but, place for a, for a place with very popular marshals. It's pretty empty. And it's like nobody's there, because it's, yeah, just, well. it's just uh, Dargo and Rigel sitting there. Waiting for uh, their company to arrive, who first arrives in the form of Braca, yep. whom Rigel addresses as lieutenant mm. immediately. Which I guess makes sense. I mean, they've met before on the, on the command carrier. Besides, of- he can probably read Insignia. Oh, yeah. Well, he can do better than we can. I don't know how consistent the the costume department has been. Well, no, but at least it's, uh, you know, it's plausible that he can, like, just look at the the, the uniform and see that he's a lieutenant. The proud Farscape tradition of you just assume that people can read the information that they need to from the blinky lights and strips of (laughs) plastic. So, yes, uh, he checks the area, makes sure that everything's fine and safe, and then enters Scorpius. They both ask, are you alone and unarmed? Yes. Good. And then they send in the troops, and Darko jumps into action, but they're quickly subdued, and Scorpius says, Lieutenant, prepare to execute them. And then we drop to the credits. Now, what did you think was going to happen at this point? Oh. Because it's a good fake-out. It is. I, I 
probably figured it was going to be a capture and then rescue them again uh, episode from this right. point on. Yeah. That the rest of the crew would have to rush yeah. to their aid. Yeah. Actually, my first thought was this, like, let's see, what, what did I write down? Of course, it's a double cross. Is like my first, like, well, yeah, yes. of course, of course, Scorpius isn't going to do that. I mean, that's so in character for Scorpius that I, I mean, I was, I was with Chama on this one. It's like, why even try to negotiate with Scorpius on something like this? It's like, Scorpius will do what, yeah. Yeah, Scorpius gonna Scorp. It is also blatantly obvious that they have a other a plan other than who does the crew does. They have, ah, they have a plan yeah. other than. I mean, it, it's it's alluded to at the very end of the episode, but all throughout the episode, I was sitting there like, okay, whatever they're doing here with Scorpius, that is not the actual plan. That is just the the setup for the plan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's our heroes for you, and like Rigel. This is Rigel's time to shine. Oh, yeah. Because he is so cool throughout this, and he just sort of nods at Scorpy. Not afraid of death. Oh, just let me finish these. Then please don't miss. Aim for the head. (laughs) Are you done fucking around? Yes. (laughs) Shall we get to business now? Because, yep, Scorpy sort of looks around. Okay, still no backup arriving. Yep. Okay, I guess they are alone. Well, we had to check that, that you were alone. Yes, yes, whatever, says Rigel. <laughs> Sit down, children. He is consistently on the ball and ahead of the curve when it comes to Scorpius. Scorpius mm. must be pretty impressed. I mean, as if, if Scorpius allows himself to be impressed, then oh, yes. Oh, yeah. But yes, uh, he tells the guys to put the guns down, allows... Dargo to punch out the lights of a few of these guys. Yeah, just (laughs) punctuating their conversation with knockout punches against helmeted (laughs) opponents. Now, I do not like knockout punches. and I know it's a a trope, but it sort of perpetuates this idea that that's possible, that you can have a a knock on the noggin that sends you asleep as opposed to brain trauma. Brain trauma is is what does it. Um, Yeah, if you're out for more than five to ten seconds, you've probably got a concussion. Scorpius is more practical about it. Ah, Cardago. If you knock out another, there'll be no soldiers to carry these three back to the ship. <clears throat> yeah. Because Dargo, to be fair, he gets to do a test as well. They're ordered not to kill us no matter what. Yeah. Okay, good. There's one left, and yeah. he has to carry three of his buddies. He can go. He makes several trips. Oh, that's true. Like It's not like the groceries. <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut to the kitchen. Please give us... Well, what are we going to do? Get the Fro Hesman out of here. We're not going out there, no way. <laughs> so aside from this negotiation, we're also dealing with the proprietress, I, I think it is. One more thing before ooh, 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 I, yes. I was going to comment on, like, Dargo uh, tells uh, Scorpius and Braca to hand over their communicators. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we get a lovely shot of Dargo's high platform boots as he crushes the... <laughs> yeah, that gentleman does not need the extra lift, but it is nice that he gets it. I mean, it's for the character. And that's when I was like, the, the shot to the kitchen. I'm just like sitting there like, okay... Why? Yes. What's the deal here? Why are we suddenly going to these people which... Right. We're, we're like, we wanted, oh, the assault on, on the command carrier. How to go to the planet and how are they going to get allies? No. And instead we get this negotiation that, oh, we don't really want. This... And then we move aside from the negotiation. The, the dialogue fades into the background and we follow the cook and the, the, the waitress, I think, proprietress. Are they, or they co-owners? I'm I think not they're co-owners. Sure. They're, 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 they're partners, I think. I think the cook was actually called Foodie. Voodie, but oh, yes, just okay. about. And she's Ske, I think. They have weird names. You've got yeah. you've got Sko Wa. Let me see. But yes, they're bickering in the kitchen. They're they've got this thermos flask that they keep taking drinks off, so I think that's probably the vodka or uh, the Uh yeah, that's <laughs> probably the cooking wine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they're passing back and forth. Because, yeah, I mean, she sees dollar signs, Australian dollar signs at this point, because she goes, oh, well, what if we cook them the most amazing meal and then maybe we could get a peacekeeper supply contract? Like, she's so ambitious. Yes. I felt so bad for her. And he's, like, just nervous and go like, no, 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 we need to make, make them go away. Uh they they look wonderful, by the way. Like she's she's some sort of fish person, maybe. Like she's okay. got some scales on the side uh, of her uh, head. Yeah, she's got, she notes she had that same kind of like golden flaky makeup that uh, Zan used to have. You know? Oh, oh! You broke my heart just <laughs> summoning that. Yes, you're right. She had that uh, that sort of mother of pearl sheen as well. Yes. Whereas he has a a, a a a more familiar human complexion, long, lovely hair. He reminded me of Mad Martigan from uh, Willow. The uh, Val been, Kilmer's it's been too long ago since person. I saw that. It's getting a TV sequel. Oh, yeah. And he's got like some tattoos on his cheeks. 
Yeah, that reminded me of Oded Fair's character, one of the Magi from uh, The Mummy. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Also a gorgeous man, by the way. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I, I, was, I was doubly into Star Trek Discovery when he showed up as Admiral Vance. And I'm a Vance as well on my mother's side. That was incredible. Okay. We're going to cut back and forth a few times between the diner and, and Talon and Moya. Shall we just split the, uh, split the scenes again? I think that's the right, our sort of patented uh, yes. uh, split the uprights. So which way do we go first? Well, right here I've got uh, the next scene on my screen is uh, the one with... Uh, so it's, I'm just in suspense. <laughs> which way are we going to go? It's... Oh, for fuck's sake. It's Chana and... Chana, uh, that's the one. Okay. Yes. She's and talking Jewel. to Jewel. And yes. like... Uh, Chana hears that Jewel is planning to leave as well. Actually, the shuttle with the Scaron has just left for the med ship. Jules comes running up and... With her luggage. With her luggage. And Chana hears that she wants to leave as well. And she goes like, no, you don't get to want to run away. I was going to run away. Yeah, but it's because she's had a vision. Oh, she's had another vision right, yeah. of peacekeepers earlier. And now also of herself mourning, she she thinks, yes. Jewel. Yeah, she wasn't going to let her go because like, if she left there, then she would be mourning her. At least that's the feeling I I got from it. You can't go. Why not? Because I saw myself mourning for you. Okay, one, I don't think you can see Dren, and two, it's really not. So, another one punch knockout. Yep. For which she has to apologize when we come back from the, 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 the next edit. Mm-hmm. And now things are a little bit problematic because one of her earlier visions has come true and peacekeepers are arriving. Just a prowler and a marauder. Yes. But they're doing a patrol and. Chris is aboard Moya, but communicating with, with yes. Talon. Tells him to arm the main gun, hold off for the moment, time being, and then gives the orders to shoot, yep. which Talon does perfectly. Yep, Talon comes up over the beautiful hulk of Moya. She's in a sort of nebula, sort of cloud that yeah. I really, really like. I know that's not what nebulas look like. Not close up, they don't, but yeah. Yep. And basically the two, two marauders uh, get taken out. Beautiful, beautiful CGI here. And then Talon can't keep it in his pants and sh- shoots the hospital ship as well. Yeah. To the absolute horror of, of everyone uh, on the command. Yes. Because it was, a, to our knowledge, defenseless and certainly non-threatening ship, ship full yeah. of patients, presumably, and doctors and Nanj Gill, whom we recently met. Right, yes. The Scaron who got put on the bus and then the bus got shot. Um, Jules takes takes Grace to task. He says, yeah. it wasn't my fault. Uh, yeah. Talon did it, but you could have stopped him somehow. Who and knows if like, he could have? Yeah, well, he tried. He he was obvious. He was telling Talon to, do, to stand down. So he was clearly talking to Talon and telling him to stop. And he hasn't got his uh, communicator with him anymore. He hasn't got the hand of friendship anymore. Does he not? No, that, oh, was, that, yeah, that, okay, that right. broke down last time round, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And I don't think he ever got the replacement installed, at least not on screen. So they need to call a, a housemate meeting. Yes. Basically, there was like, John is just sitting there with a very resigned side going like, why haven't we starburst yet? Why are we still here? Yeah, uh, and there's been an explosion. Pilot and goes like, come back. And pilot goes like, yes, uh, Moya doesn't want to uh, jump because Talon's shut down. And is not responding. We're not leaving Talon here, so we got to hold that that thing. I think think it's a bit weird that like Pilot at this point says like I want, I'm going to talk privately to Moya. It's like he always talks privately to Moya. We never hear him saying anything to Moya, or yeah. it's, it's always. <laughs> but yeah, like even when later on Aaron asks to speak to Moya, he says I'll ask her, and then he sort of turns away, and there's some beepity booping. Yeah, and he says and she's listening. Yeah, yeah. which. Gives a lot more credence to your your hypothesis that <laughs> that Moya is just really a sock puppet. <laughs> For, yeah. Your mother wouldn't want. Yeah, Moya doesn't want you to do this. It's like, mm. yeah, all of this is tremendously frustrating for Crichton. I mean, he's he's not cracking wise. He's no. he's not providing uh, a new initiative. And part of that is because he usually has people to talk to, and specifically Aaron mm-hmm. and their relationship is. Cold, Troubles, and distant, yes. and, yeah. So there's a discussion about what to do with Talon. It's like, firstly, about how to get back in touch with him. It's like, they're, 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 at twenty two points, they're saying like that he's allowing to dock, and that's, that, that's I thought that was a bit weird. Like, well, the basic gist is it's Grace who proposes. Yes, that he needs intervention. Yes, that this paranoia is abnormal, and 
I find this one kind of difficult to contemplate, actually, because mm-hmm. there, there is a sort of not very sensitive allegory for traumatic behavior and yeah. like surgical intervention because the the, the solution mm. he proposes like is a basically a, a cold restart of uh, talent systems yeah yeah after the sort of traumatized components of his personality have been altered by text mm. Personal, described- personality dialysis <laughs> yeah but yes it's it made very clear that he will not be coming back the same person yes yeah. Whether whether he retains his memories, whether uh, his how I mean, definitely his personality will be altered. I'm trying to think of some kind of surgical or therapeutic intervention to actually alter right. someone's brain in the case of a, a, I mean, a an illness. It's probably c- c- compared to electroshock ter- therapy or something like that. Right, which was once you know a horrific misapplication of medical principles yes. and is now in certain cases an actually prescribed therapy for certain types of yes. uh, neural disease. But like. It, they describe him as being sick because he's exhibiting this behavior, but mm-hmm. he's a war child who grew right. up in incredibly confusing and traumatizing circumstances. And is this sickness or is this scarring from, from wounds that just right, need, yeah. need to heal? Because that's what Moya believes initially, that he'll, he'll heal on his own. Mm. Now, Jules does correctly point out, yeah, he has already killed... A lot of people. Yeah, 600 people on board that medical ship. And the prospect of it happening again is... Yeah, yeah. As I mean, he's clearly uncontrollable, so... Yep, a danger to himself and to, and to Moya and to uh, us. Well, danger to Moya is very obvious because he's next starts shooting at Moya. Yeah. Which finally convinces Moya to actually start listening to Aaron at that point and actually consider the fact that, yes, yeah, something needs to be done. And Aaron gives a wonderful speech about how that everybody's going to be there for, the, for him and that they're going to do the best they can, but yeah, something needs to be done. This cannot cannot continue like this. Yeah. At John's prompting. Yeah. Like that that took a while to sort of manifest because they're not really talking. She sort of comes to him and she says, okay, we can still work together, to which he, I mean, he finds that quite difficult. Yeah. But John does say immediately, okay, well, Moya needs to hear this from someone that she trusts. Yeah. And that she knows has the best interests of, of Talon at heart, and that's you. So that's when he sends, suggests to Aaron to go and talk to Moya, and mm. Moya is ultimately convinced, which results in, in Talon acting out again. Yeah. But still with some restraint, right? Uh, Takes a few pot shots at Moya, does a few, blow, blows up uh, command a little bit. It's more than like a teenager slamming the door. This is an actual physical attack. Yes. Exercising his power... But he does eventually open a, a docking bay and allows... Allows him to come in, yes. And uh, he deploys his defences and, and holds Aaron and John and, and Chris at gunpoint. And Aaron talks him down, like, you, you actually don't want to do this. You know that you're doing things that you absolutely don't want to do, that you loathe. Talon, you listen to me. You destroyed a ship with many innocent people on board. You shot your own mother. You would never do that. Unless you were sick and frightened. When Moya told you what we had to do, you panicked and struck out. I don't think you really meant to hurt Moya. You could have destroyed her if you wanted to, but you didn't. Just as I'm hoping that you don't really want to hurt us. Again, yeah, very similar speech that uh, as was given to Moya, but now to uh, Talon. Yep. Which eventually convinces him to uh, shut down his uh, point defense guns. With... With Talon's permission, Krace shuts Talon down. Yeah. The uh, the mechanical parts, the, the the mechanoid parts, apparently the biologicals can be kept alive with artificial life support. Yep. Talon goes dark. And it's so, it's so gutting to yeah. see them standing in this in this room that is normally so alive with light and sound. And some, and, yeah, it's dark and dim and and their quiet. Footsteps just echo. There's no there's no boops. There's no gurgles. There's no breathing. It's it's haunting. So I think that covers this arc. Yeah, or less. back yeah. to the stupid robbery that nobody wanted. <laughs> I I don't know. I I don't know if the, the the rest of the fandom sort of felt this way, but I was. This was not my favorite episode by a long shot. Mm-hmm. Like I was fully prepared for Farscape to do something wild and play with my expectations, but yeah. to do something so so stupid that nobody wanted that we didn't want a heist and we didn't want two really stupid screaming robbers but then they cast Ben Mendelssohn 
a fantastic Australian actor. You know him as a director Krennic from Rogue One. He was in charge of the Death Star program. Oh, right. Yeah. A bunch of other stuff that we know him from as well. Knowing with Nicolas Cage, I think he was in... Mm-hmm. Oh, I think he also played a scroll in one of the Marvel films. Yes, yes, Captain Marvel. That was him. Incredibly sexy, charming man. And he's put under this blue monkey makeup with an awful mullet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which he thought was an homage to his previous... He'd, he'd starred in a film called Mullet just previously. And oh. Thought, oh. So you're honouring me. No, I had the wig before you were cast. You yeah. just put the right size, Ben. <laughs> Oh, oh well. <laughs> and uh, Tony Hayes, I think the other actor's name. Uh, apparently, the director, Peter Andrikidis, was so impressed with Tony Hayes that he cast him for his next film. Oh, yeah. oh well, well, I mean, that's how it goes. So, because it turns out that while they are doing the uh, talks about how to proceed, first of all, we start with the bracelets, the Yensha, the Ayensha bracelets, I believe. They were yes, called. that's right. Yes. Because they, they negotiate, or Rigel and Scorpius had been negotiated, but they wanted assurances of physical safety before yes, boarding. Yes, before they're coming on board a command carrier. And Scorpius has says, a suggestion. Yeah. yeah. He puts these two bracelets on the table, get, makes uh, Braca put one on, uh, takes a bit convincing for Dargo to put the other one on. But again, at uh, Rigel's assurance, Rigel is, Rigel is reading Scorpius very well here. Yeah. He knows exactly when he's being truthful and when he's <sighs> bullshit. Yeah. I mean, it's a good calculation. And as he says, right. well, we're very close to striking a deal. Yeah. This would not be the moment for betrayal. That that was earlier. Yes. You know, if he wanted to betray us, he wouldn't have gone through the effort of a whole negotiation first. So just put it on and see what happens. And then Scorpius gets Braca to prostrate himself before the Dominar. Braca. Pay homage to the Domina. What? I invite you, Domina, to attack the lieutenant. I have no quarrel with him. Humor me. <laughs> so, he, so he headbutts him, which also sends uh, Dargo reeling, because apparently these bracelets, they communicate uh, sensory pain and other things. So if one, one what one feels, the other feels. Yep. And... If one dies, the other one dies. Yes, a brilliant system, which Rigel finds eminently uh, uh, satisfactory until Scorpio says, yes, well, one will be worn by Crichton and the other by Bracca. Bracca? You would not hesitate to kill him. Yeah, you no. have no hesitation in killing <laughs> Bracca, Bracca no. obviously. Yeah, so that wouldn't be... Uh... <laughs> and Scorpius absolutely refuses, like... At he- first... To, to yeah. wear these bracelets. Now, I mean, you see the intensity in his eyes. That, that, is, that is not an option. And he's willing to walk away from the table over this. He's willing to walk away from wormhole knowledge. Yes. Rather than subject himself to the bracelet. Like, I guess that's Although his... Although he does agree. I mean, he considers it. In the end, he does. Yeah. And he says that there is a basis of trust. Yes. Now that they've had this shared experience. This shared experience, which is so... Oh, I'm sure that there are people whose favorite episode this is. And I was fully prepared to appreciate the, the diner robbery a lot more. But the screeching, the <laughs> simian ape-like screeching, I just can't love it. Apparently, the actors had a really good time together. Yeah, I can imagine it sounds like, like they had a lot of fun. Uh, but yes, at this point, the two blue monkey-ish creatures come running in with really big guns. Uh, and worse sh- teeth. Start the shooting the place up a little bit, announce that this is a robbery, that they want the money... Uh, yeah, it's not entirely like they don't really seem to know their plan either. Which Rigel at one point uh, mentioned, like it doesn't seem to be going very well. No, it's fine. This is fine. This is fine. I'd hate to see when you do bad. <laughs> we burn this place down. <laughs> yes, because it turns out that they're not there to rob the place at all. That they've been hired by uh, Foodie to burn the place down. It's an, it's in, an insurance, insurance scam. scam yes. Which, it's just to do so quickly, but I mean, they're all still at gunpoint. We have we have people who are, are are in control of the greatest destructive force in the universe and of a great army in this galaxy, and they're at gunpoint from these nincompoops with guns, and they still have to strategize their way around it. Yes, the, the plan changes quite a few times. First of all, the, the proprietor says, tells them to go away, and they go, no, we're not going away because we want money. Uh, yeah, Rigel suggests that they ransom the peacekeepers. Hey, you yes. take the peacekeepers and then uh, provides them a whole plan, which Scorpius doesn't appreciate. So he turns it around on them and goes like, well, actually, this guy, little guy over here is uh, Rigel the 16th, Dominar, blah, 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 blah. Yep, 
And now they only have a limited amount of time before either of the nincompoops realizes that nobody's going to pay a dime yes. for Rigel. Really. <sighs> No, I'm struggling to love it, but I it's just so stupid. They they're so it's all I can think about how thick they are. Yes, it's I mean it's it's obviously played for comedy. All the fight scenes in this part. It's Oh, oh, I did like uh Sko, that's Ben Mendelssohn. He's got the he's got the gray hair. Yeah. He's got this lovely sort of silver gun. It sort of looks like a an extra large derringer. Yes. That's a, that was a cute little pistol and it it actually shoots like the noisy cricket from Oh yeah. Uh, Men in Black, yes. It, it's like, got, it's some... got a lot of punch for a little gun because it sends several people flying through the air. There's also the drama, which I actually did like, between the waitress and the, and yes. the, and the cook, where she's, she's shocked that he wanted to burn down their place because she, she loves likes it. it here. You did? What? I would have told you. I should have asked. But, but, you want to burn but this? I, I wanted to tell you. I, love this place I, I should have told you. you. Yes, it's like their little thing. But Aww. he wants other things. He wants to move away and go make a life together somewhere else. Yeah, that's because yes, we're, again, there we find them arguing in the kitchen while I know. everything else goes on in the uh, in the main room of the diner. This soup, this stupid distraction is overshadowed by by honestly heart wrenching drama because. I, I think that he he genuinely you know Cook Voody genuinely wants to do something better with her, but he doesn't realize that she actually loves this and she doesn't want to do anything else. Yes. And it's just so heartbreaking. When eventually Voody stands up to the would be robbers whose yes. plan has changed again. There's some sh- Braca gets shot in the leg. Oh, I missed that during, because I just didn't fucking care. Yeah, no. So during one of the scuffles, Raka gets shot in the leg, which right. also inc- incapacitates Dargo, and that's why we we constantly have Dargo trying to keep Raka awake by oh, slapping yeah. around, which he also then feels himself. So that's a little bit of an amusing uh, situation. Food gets handed back and forth. It's all very confusing, and like I said, it's it's played mostly for laughs. Yes, yes, and I'm sure that there are people who who really enjoyed it. I imagine the younger viewers certainly would have uh, would have had a wild time with this. Although maybe we should make them stop watching Farscape. I think there's a reason why it was, you know, children should not be watching Farscape. I don't think most of the episodes. Oh, I think no, there's a reason not. why it was on after eight, 8 p.m. It makes sense. It was after the watershed. Yes. Poor Voody when he protests and, 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 and tries to... Get them to go away and stop with the, yeah, the burning down and the whole scheme. But no, they're definitely convinced that they will be able to make lots of money now. This is fueled by, in turn, Rigel and Scorpius, who I loved working together. I just loved yeah, how, how right. Rigel and Scorpius had this chemistry of scheming and just, yeah, working together and how, how well they interacted. Yeah. I mean, it, there's a bit of one-upmanship. Like, initially, when Rigel says, oh, you should ransom Scorpius, and then Scorpius turns it around, and it sort of looks like, oh, 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 I am rubber, you are glue. Yeah. But Scorpius's reasoning was, well, if they do come, then a standard procedure for an assault. Mm. And during that assault, one of us may be get caught in the crossfire, and that will endanger the deal. So that was actually quite reasonable. Oh, yes. But by averting that, he has put down this ticking time bomb that's supposedly someone's going to have to pay a lot of ransom for uh, for Rigel, and they have to sort of work it out. So, let me see. Yes. <laughs> the plan that they work out is first Rigel shoots Scorpius. I mean, okay, so... The, no, no, hang on. Re- the, no, exactly. Yeah. I was making a joke. Right. Because... Let me see. No, you do it. They're too stupid. I don't even okay, want to say so, this. So fucking basically what happens is they... me so much. I'm just fuming. Yeah, Go. The thing is, like, they realize that they have no way to escape. There's only the, the Growler, and only Dargo can fly the Growler. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Which is a problem, right. because it's DNA locked and voice locked, so only, uh, only Dargo can fly the Growler. So, And they're going to need the Growler to get away from the Peacekeepers, peacekeepers because, because otherwise because they're not going to be able to like outrun the Peacekeepers. So, uh, Which, you know, I mean, the thing's a Hyundai as... Uh, yeah. So in order to establish the trust, Blue Guy the First gives Rigel the, his little dinky gun and tells him to shoot Bracca. Ah, uh, yes. At that point, Rigel goes like, well, I can't shoot Bracca because, like I told you about those bloody bracelets, if I'll kill Dargo, and we need Dargo to fly the Prowler. Why so difficult? I hated it when it happened in the episode. <laughs> I hated it more when all of our beloved listeners started quoting it. <laughs> Hey, uh, maybe I'll come around to it by the end of the episode. You don't know. Redemption arc. So then eventually, Rigel, who was still holding the gun while he's on the gunpoint from blue guy number two, turns to face 
Scorpius. You want me to kill someone so you'll trust me. How about... Domino. Butcher. Well, if I have to shoot a peacekeeper, peacekeeper. how about that one? I shoot that one. And he shoots, he shoots uh, Scorpius. Shoot, uh, Who gets Scorpius blasted goes, through the diner. He goes flying over the counter for the first time this episode, because it happens again later. Scorpius is taken out for the count. And now, he, he, <laughs> Rytel says he wants to take a, a trophy, which the... Yes. The, which Sko and Wa understand, and so he ducks down and then starts whispering to Scorpius, who yes. is obviously still alive. Yeah, so how did you know I was wearing body armor? <laughs> like, well, I didn't, but... <laughs> hmm. Not so bad for me either way. <laughs> Rigel? <laughs> yes. He's amazing. And then they start working together, hatching a plan. Scorpius opens up his brain cooling Yes, he so has, where he has a little one-shot backup thing. Yes, <laughs> one of the silver rods is actually a one-shot pulse blaster, which yep. is so cool. I mean, on the one hand, it's a weird thing to have inside your head, but the way that it's pointed, it would only blast through his skull outside of his brain. I suppose so, yeah. If something went wrong, if it overheated. I don't know if it's sensitive to overheating. But in the meantime, the proprietress, she's drinking away her sorrows. Voodie has been shot at this point yes. during his process. It's so, like, my heart broke for her. I actually started caring about this the most. Although now I'm looking at the Jeeves, I see the the sort of pearlescent makeup that the blue guys got. And it's, I mean, that part actually looks quite good. And they really did sink their teeth into the performance. No, 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 no. I'm not going to like it. Um, and Rigel shoots them. Oh, thank God. Yeah, well, there's a lot of faffing about. Now the waitress actually kicks it off because she comes in and uh, throws the knife into the guy's shoulder. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, he like starts a- spinning around, shooting wildly. This is where Scorpius goes flying over the counter for the second time. Oh, yeah, well done. And then after he, like, finally slows down and quiets up, that's when, like, Rigel shoots him with the one-shot pulse blaster. And he goes flying, goes flying through the window again. Such a cool shot. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's an actual sort of close-up on the eyes, close-up on Skull's eyes, both of them drawing their weapon. One yep. is larger than the other, but Rigel's quicker. Merciless. Well yes. done, Rigel. The, the other one has been shot by the first one, I think. It's, it's on a, no, no, oh, no. Oh, yes, yes, there was another gambit. Right, yes. Bracca so, removes his the eye orange bracelet. Because Scorpius told Rigel the combination, and Rigel told Dargo or... I missed that, because I thought that... Like, I noticed that gun being hung on the wall about Scorpius telling the combination to get the bracelet off, but I, didn't, never, I, I never saw how that was communicated past... Rigel. So Rigel I've, was standing near Bracca and, and Dargo and sort yeah. of mumbling it, and then they screeched for him to come along and said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, then okay. he, ha 314, 314, the code is 314. Because the Bracca's bracelet is now on Wa's wrist, and so Dargo can keep Wa occupied by repeatedly... <laughs> banging bra- his head against the floor. <laughs> <laughs> He's even deaf to anyone's pleas to get him to stop. Apparently, his skull is very hard, but I'm sure that those thuds ring extra loud. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, thereby keeping the second one out of the fight. And yes, this solves the problem. Foodie's dying words are like burning down in... (laughs) My God, what a thing to to do. Like, she's just said that, that she loves this place and he's... It's, it's like, it's like as, a, as a dying wish, sort of handing her his bowling ball and saying, win the championship for me. Win, do, win it in my honor. But I can't bowl. Do this for me. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, I don't want to, but okay. And they, they actually burn the place down and uh, And once leave. again, the Farscape crew leave a planet better than they found it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But a deal has been made. Because yeah. everybody is happy to uh, be returned on Moya, even though there's a lot of... The, the atmosphere is a little bit down. Command is scarred and burnt once again. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chiana's helping Darko to limp around, asking what happened down there. I don't want to talk about it. It's a long story. Anything happened here on Moya? Oh, you know, just the usual. <laughs> just like, While they're walking through the rubble. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the amount of understatement here is uh, remarkable. And we... Uh, we have a final. We have a scene with John and uh, Aaron. Aaron, and yes. She actually talks. Yeah. About about how difficult it is uh, to be around him and what it was like. That it was perfect. We were perfect. It, we, was, yeah. we were so beautiful, and you're so like him, and you are him. No. I'm me. I was 
was here. I miss that dance. And he realizes that she has a thing with other John. Uh, yeah. And it doesn't translate. Those experiences, those are those belong to the, the, the other John. Like, But yeah, she did actually call him other Crichton. Calls him other Crichton, I believe. It's, uh, uh, yeah, she goes back. I mean, she calls him Crichton at the end. She called him John a few times in yeah, the meantime. But I think also other Crichton. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But she says that we'll finish this the way we started it, mm. together. Yeah. Right? I really, really like that. Because it goes on about how we're going to do things on the command carrier, where, yeah. Right. So Rigel, and this is where like, the scene where I said, like, Rigel proclaims that, oh, yes, it all went fine. We made exactly the arrangements that we were going to make, and we even uh, yeah. ensured security, uh, not mentioning the bracelets. But, yeah, it's like, yeah, it works fine for him. He's not the one who's going to have to wear the bracelet. Yep. Yeah, they have other plans. And in exchange, I believe they talked about uh, full amnesty and uh, a relocation to their home planets. Yeah, that's one of the things that uh, Scorpius mentions that was one of the demands that they made. Now, I think it was... Like, if it happened, then it was off-screen, where Rigel insisted on a full battalion, a fleet of command carriers to retake Hyneria <laughs> for him. But uh. I'm pretty sure that got negotiated away. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, he probably went like, yeah, not happening. That's, uh... All right. She gives me a woody. She gives you the willies. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, it's that time. It is that time. So I love the... the at, at one point in, in the scenes in the diner, there's like a... Uh, when uh, Scorpius turns the tables on Rigel with the hostage situation... The way Rigel looks so wonderfully miserable. I thought that was like, that was yes. such an amazing shot. That was the way his like ear brows turn and wave and had the expression. That was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, he's been fantastic throughout. Like yeah. it used to be, I, I saw this in the, the Visual Companion, the book that we were able to purchase thanks to our Patreon subscribers. Like they used to have the mandate to write episodes so that Rigel goes to one place and stays there. And, like, that's gone. He's moving all over the place. Yeah. He's flying on his throne sled. Like, the whole set was designed with him in mind. Unfortunately, they couldn't, like, dig into the ground to make no. spaces for the extremely large So he's still always sliding behind counters and stuff like that. But I it's, love it's it. so well done. It's yeah. great. So other candidates is how stoned Pilot looks when talent gets switched off. Oh, whoa. That Does was, he? I thought so. I mean, he, he looked like he was completely... Uh, but that's... Uh, I mean, he was processing Moya's, like, shock, grief, uh, Probably, yeah. sadness as well. But I think it will have to go to the interaction between Rigel and Scorpius. I love that. I loved oh, how they... Yeah, how they that had, is the best. I loved how they worked against each other, how they worked together against the, the two critters. Just, like, the chemistry between Rigel and Scorpius, that it's it definitely gets my it? woody. Yeah, that, that was so fantastic. And the sort of respect that they have for one another, it's, I mean... Like, they've only met once before, I think, right? Yes. On the command carrier, and that did not go well for ultimately either of them. No, no, true. But, like, yeah, actually impressing Scorpius is a rare and dangerous thing to do. Oh, yes, I can imagine, because now you're on his radar. But I, I think Wayne Pyra must have had so much fun, like, acting versus uh, uh, Rigel and the puppeteer. Uh, yeah, because he That's... has to keep a straight face. Yeah, totally. He has to play someone who fully, like, acknowledges and respects this person, but also secretly disdains him, despite the fact that he's a lump of foam latex. And he can see the six dudes with their arms <laughs> up his <laughs> bum <laughs> hiding underneath Working the table. Him. Yes, because yes. he can see him. <laughs> And I would love to see the outtakes of the uh, scene where he just, like, at the, right at the end, he throws him a little uh, morsel of something or the other and Rigel catches in his mouth. And throws a peanut in his I mouth. I want to see how that... I mean, it's, it, it kind of reminded me of the... Uh, th those outtakes from Emmett Otto Jug Band Christmas. I don't know if you've ever seen that. <laughs> yes, where you've the, shown that to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Another uh, Jim Henson production. So Yep, where where some hubcap or something is supposed to roll past. Yeah, and a it, drum, and it just, like, never rolls right. And, it's <laughs> and the puppeteers stay in character and have the sort of puppets sort of look at it. Oh, went wrong again, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> almost, well, almost got it this time. Try again. <laughs> oh, look, there's a giant man. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so I'd love to see the if there's an outtake reel of that uh, how they were shooting that then I would love to see that. Um the willies, willies, yeah. willies. Oh, oh. I mean as in an actual gave actually gave me the willies it would have been like when Talon goes uh, a little bit nuts when he's like 
the scene where he shoots the hospital ship. Yeah. That was just like, yeah, that gave me, literally, yeah, that gave me to this. I was like, yeah, we didn't oh. even talk about that. We just talked about it happening. Yeah. What did you think in that moment? Like, oh, how did the... Yeah, it's like, okay, what are they doing? It's like my, I, I literally wrote down what the fuck talent, you know? That's Right. I can't believe that we just uh, blasted past that in our, in our yeah. uh, temp, miraculous tempo for a change. No, I'd agree. Uh, thinking about, like, why is this happening? What's, what's going on with talent that, this, that he's acting like this? I mean, I mean, he's had this behavior for a while now where he's, like, very trigger-happy with his big gun. Yeah, yeah. He's refused commands to, like, break off before, certainly yeah. when he was uh, doing a strafing run. Yeah, no, not shooting at the other ships, uh, the Skeksy ships. Although that was in self-defense, self turns out. But, uh, yeah, he's a bit of a troubled uh, youngster. Which is, I mean, you, you say that he's, like, a, a war child, but he's, like, most of that has been his own wars. It's not like he was subjected to a lot of war. Uh, well, he was forcibly separated from his mother, and grown as an experiment, yeah. and... Uh, 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 hounded by peacekeepers and, and conflicted with these instincts that he can't resolve. Right. Well, we never know really what happened during the, the, the period that he was off with uh, Kreis. No, Kreis but, says that he tried to mollify right. uh, 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 yeah. Talon's aggression, and I think we we would do well to believe that. Like, yes. that seems reasonable. Yeah, considering what has happened since. At the time, I was uh, more disinclined to believe that because right. I still think it was firmly on the fence that, like, yeah, Kreis was, like, covering his own uh, machinations with that. Yeah. But I'm starting to more and more believe, more I see, the more I'm believing that that is actually, he spoke the truth when he said that. So, yeah, yeah there's that. So, what about yours? Okay, it's a really unconventional move. Yeah. It's going to be the stupid fucking robbers. Even though I hate it, yeah. I love that the, the that Farscape does this. Like, I will always, like, a big swing over a safe bet, I will always take it, even if I do not love it. <laughs> no, no. I, just the fact that they chose to do this is so, so brilliant. I, and clearly the actors were having fun with it. So, yes, this whole plot is, is gets my Woody. Okay. Wow. And my Willy goes to Talon as well, but... <sighs> When he was shut down, like I, I oh, knew that this was the yes. episode where he shoots the hospital, and I know that, you know we're sp we don't see the people there, and, and Nash Kill is a side character, so we actually can't, I can't actually feel that much for them. But when he's just dark and cold, and now he's yeah. he's not a a living ship anymore, it's just a mm -hmm. hunk of comatose ship, I guess. Suppose is the best way to put it. Yeah, but now they're they're not walking in in sort of a symbiotic relationship with no. this this beautiful being, this beyond beautiful being. It's just metal plating on the ground, and there's no there's no soul. And no, oh, that yeah. really got me. Yes. Okay. And that's the story so far, Skate. Please join us next week or in two weeks' it's, time. It feels so weird to just drop down in energy like that and then jump back up again. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, next week we have another Tales of the Uncharted Territories and after that we will have episode 320, Lambs to the Slaughter. Into the Lion's, Lion's Den. Den. Where the crew of Moya takes on a dangerous mission aboard Scorpius's command carrier where hostility and peril are at every turn and a gr threat greater than Scorpius himself may await. Ooh. Ooh. Threat greater than or Scorpius. Or maybe they'll do another fake out and yeah. it'll be an even stupider robbery. Well... Farscape, robbery, a robbery on board the command carrier. See, like it's going to be another with, heist episode, isn't it? Yeah. Right, right, right. I mean, you can't imagine them doing this this stupid heist episode. But what people really wouldn't see coming is that we do it twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can support us. You can send in your fan fictions and your synopses. Hey, we love those synopses. Uh, you can find all of those links at sofarscape.com/slash links. We'd love to hear from you. We've actually been hearing from a few new people who've joined the uh, uh, the Patreon or found us on Twitter, where we are, at so Farscape. Also on Facebook, lovely, lovely, lovely to hear from you. You're all wonderful people, and it's such a fantastic fandom. And since we're recording this now, and I don't know exactly when it's coming out, but happy Pride! Yes, indeed. I mean, it is Pride here while we're recording this, so I guess it'll be maybe right at the end of Pride? Uh, let's yeah. find out, and otherwise we'll be engaged in, in Queer Wrath Month, which is <laughs> even better. But I'm Kaki. I'm Kay. So, so Farscape, Farscape, so good. good. <laughs>